Welcome to the Star Trek Critic, where each episode is graded like a school project, starting with 100 points, taking away one point for each error, and I make snarky commentary along the way like the person behind you in the theater that won't shut up. Today's episode, Unnatural Selections. It is a great show, but since the Trek universe changed their rules about genetic engineering, it loses the first point for no longer fitting in with Star Trek laws. Ironically, everything they're doing here proves why generic engineering is now illegal. Of course, Darwin's station is doing the total opposite of what Charles Darwin had in mind. Did you ever notice an extra always crosses in front of the turbo lift before somebody goes in or out? Another point is lost here since Dr. Pulaski has been on the ship for months now and it's just a plot device foreshadowing what might happen in the rest of the show. Check this out. Another extra walks in front of the turbo lift doors and somebody comes out. Another point lost for Diana Muldar being a guest and not a regular. Data says I number one. The USS Landry is a female. 300 years in the future, spaceships will have genders. Or are they just preferred pronouns? We'll never know. Data says I number two. They always sneak up on the land tree from behind. Worf wants to invade. Riker wants to hack their computer and spy on them. Check this out, another extra crossed in front of the door. Jean-Luc performs a Picard maneuver. Now he thinks he's on Logan's run. Now we all know his secret code. That's not secure at all, is it? There she goes again. Now Riker follows Picard since he's such an ass kisser, then after they pass the turbo lift, Dr. Pulaski walks in. Their goal is to take over the land tree and stop it. Is it moving fast or just drifting? We never really find out. But I think it's just drifting. The crew of the land tree all died of old age. Aww. According to the land tree's log, Enterprise only missed him by about seven or eight hours. While they listen to Captain Talaga's final log, both Riker and Worf contemplate why they grew beards. Now they do contact tracing, and Dr. Pulaski recommends quarantine. In many ways, Star Trek warns the world of the future quite frequently. The stars in the background don't move here, but they do move behind Dr. Pulaski, so minus one point. Worf says I number three. Minus one point for not sending a robot medical probe over to the land tree to get a sample from one of the deceased. Minus one point for a black square on the back panel. I normally take away points for captain's logs, but this one mentions time and location has changed since the commercials. As normal in the show, they never went to their original destination. Did anyone call Star Station India and tell them the ship was diverted? Wesley says I number four. Dr. Kingsley is rather fussy. However, she is experiencing the worst hot flash in history. She remembers Dr. Pulaski's book while well, Riker and Picard are thinking, that's a weird name for a romance novel. And like any science lab that deals with genetic engineering, they refuse to believe they are responsible. Where have I heard this before? Of course, they blame it on somebody that came into contact with them. Captain Picard says, they all died. She's like, yep, that proves it was somebody else's fault. Oh look, they have genetically engineered children. So this station involved in genetic engineering created a deadly virus. After 2020, it's kind of hard to feel sorry for them. Dr. Pulaski says, you're gonna have to take one for the team. The majority of this show involves how everyone goes back and forth in a quarantine situation. In 1989, they predicted what everyone would argue about in 2020. Of course, this created virus is much more deadly than what we encountered. Again, the stars aren't moving, which would be impossible, so minus one more point. Chief O'Brien finally has a name. Yes! Worf is right to freak out. He does not look like a 12 year old at all. Worf says he is telepathic. Kate says this is the future of humanity. Picard's thinking, I thought this was illegal. Captain Picard and Dr. Pulaski argue like they've been married for 30 years. And Picard gets the last word in this argument. Of course, she was cutting him off the whole time. Look close, there is a patch in the floor. Proof that this is a government ship built by the lowest bidder. Kate asks Deanna for advice. Deanna says, both of you are stubborn as mules, that's the problem. Dr. Kingsley says, you have to save them. Pulaski says, you're the ones that caused the whole mess, and they are the cause. Jordy saves the day by suggesting the shuttlecraft. Round two of Picard and Pulaski. They would have a sophisticated machine to breathe the air, so minus one point. Pulaski wins. Yes! But the door doesn't open for her right away. This shuttle is the Sakharov, named after Andrei Sakharov, a Russian Nobel Peace Prize winner for human rights. Here I feel sorry for Data because he's not human, he wouldn't get the disease, so they use poor data to do all the dirty work. Also, there's no guarantee that the virus won't stick to him or his uniform. 
Minus one point, Data would have checked with the captain first. Minus one point for Dr. Pulaski not being in a safety suit. Here are the shuttle bay doors at a 90 degree angle and flush with the edge of the ship. Here is definitely not the same shuttle bay, so minus one point. The shuttle is clearly on the port side of the Enterprise, but you see it through Data's port side window, minus one point. Transporter operator says I number four. The operator has a nice swooping hand gesture. Somehow, I doubt if it's legal to constantly encase 12 year olds in Styrolite for medical testing. And this is the biggest 12 year old anyone has ever seen. What if his telepathy is how the virus is transmitted? In reality, the producers made him telepathic so they wouldn't have to pay him extra for having a speaking part. Aww. And she didn't test the boy right away for antibodies or a virus, so minus one point. Dr. Pulaski's tennis elbow came back to haunt her. Picard maneuver number three. Picard says Pulaski and Davy are more important than the disaster at Darwin Station, so minus one point. Deanna wants to get them all killed. Don't listen to her during a quarantine situation. This is also the first time Chief O'Brien sits in the conference room. Here is where this episode loses its thunder. The transporter is the miracle cure to everything. They just beam out the virus. O'Brien says a transporter can't filter it out, so they decide to magically, genetically transport her back in time. Like having that backup time on your computer. Dr. Pulaski has never used a transporter. She knows it can keep track of her DNA and reproduce her at any time. This is a beautiful map painting of the Darwin Station. Dr. Kingsley pretends to feel sorry for Pulaski while secretly wanting to say, this is what you get for not saving the children. She doesn't give up on her beliefs, does she? Resisting disease and being a carrier are two different things. Pulaski says, let's talk about the children. Do you remember these guys? And these guys? And that genetic engineering is illegal, which we won't know until Deep Space Nine? Dr. Kingsley says, of course we know, but this is totally different. These kids are telepathic and can move things with their minds, and their antibodies attack and destroy everyone in sight. See, our genetic engineering isn't like theirs at all. And the Langtree crewman had the flu a few weeks before they'd even got to Darwin Station, so he had only the remains of the virus on him. Data is going to get on the computer and call him out on their BS. Now for the sad news. Taggett said Dr. Pulaski wanted to work with Picard and was a big fan and even knew his track record, but Picard didn't even welcome her on board the ship or knew she wrote a book. And now she's going to die. Aww. Data learns that the kids are lethal to the human race, just like this guy. Wasn't he the product of too many vaccinations? What they don't say is whether or not the antibodies are still flying around in the Darwin station. I say it is because on the land tree they all infected each other and died almost instantly. Neither of the crewmen have rank, so minus one point. It turns out that genetic engineering of children is a dangerous thing and kids should not be involved in any type of genetic experiments. Dr. Pulaski makes her final medical log for the Enterprise. Look closely, the shuttle is in the matte painting. The little old ladies say goodbye to Data. Deanna should know her comment is no help at all. It happens again. In a crisis moment when you go through the turbo lift and extra crosses in front of the doors. He says no life forms are present, but if you get technical, a virus was not a life form. The card wants to try the transporter trace one last time. And now you know Cole Meany got his job because he can really spout out the techno babble. The card's like, interesting, I have no idea what he said. Dr. Pulaski would have brought her own records on her identity disk, so minus one point here. Again, proof Star Trek never came up with online record keeping. Dr. Pulaski's hairbrush saves the day. Minus one point. The same girl crossed when Picard came out of the turbo lift. Since it's his fifth time, we're gonna take a drink. Picard should be telling her this from the transporter room and not the bridge. Time is valuable right now, so minus one point. O'Brien's like, I think the captain should do this one. There's no way this magic trick would work, so minus one point. And minus one point because this would probably kill her in the process. Dr. Pulaski and Miss She's as terrified of the transporter as Dr. McCoy. Wesley says, I number five, so we get to drink again. <laughs> Dr. and Pulaski makes a wonderful final log for the show to remind everyone that scientific exploration comes at a price. Minus one point for a black square on the back panel. Dr. Pulaski should be on the bridge for this, so minus one more point. Minus one point for reuse footage for the beginning of the show. Wesley is standing wrong, so minus one point. Worf changed position, so minus one point. Minus one point for resuming the mission and forgetting they left the shuttlecraft on the planet's surface. 
Before we go any further, two missed bloopers from the Shizoid Man, a film crewman in the hallway, and some type of barricade on the bridge. So, who were the genetic engineers? George Baxter Holder is now a doctor. Scott Trost will be back in Season 6 at Deep Space Nine. J. Patrick McNamara recently left us with 50 screen credits. He was on Close Encounters, The A-Team, and Mr. Preston in the Bill and Ted movies. Patricia Smith has 90 screen credits, including The Twilight Zone, My Favorite Martian, and Mission Impossible. She spent a lifetime battling diabetes. Unnatural selection, which warns the world about the dangers of genetic engineering, especially when it comes to the engineering of children, gets a score of 74%. The moral of the story when it comes to genetic engineering is don't do it. Be sure to leave comments below, click that like button, the share button, and that subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon.